What's up, everybody? I'm back. It's been a while. Um, I do have my coffee. The last time I covered a Ren song was before the release of the new album. Um, and I've been just, I've been doing other stuff. Uh, in the meantime, if you see the link there to my Substack, um, I've been writing about right wing religious militant extremism in the u.s which is interesting to me not necessarily to anybody else but if you are interested in learning more about uh right-wing militia groups and things like that you're welcome to check it out but i saw part three of money game and i thought i got a little time i want to get back in and do something so that's what we're covering today money game part three um you'll notice my hair is long and luxurious now we'll, we'll see i'm, I'm probably gonna get cut soon but I think we'll leave it long. Um, before I get into it, as always, I haven't listened to this song first. Um, I'm going to go straight through. Some people do like it. Some people don't like it. If you don't like it, go watch somebody else react. I mean, that's, that's really what it is at the end of the day. I want to watch it all the way through as one piece uh, and not chop it up. Uh, don't be a dick. And remember, I'm not a professional. Um, if I was getting paid to do this, I'd be doing it more consistently, right? So just uh, enjoy the music. Hopefully you enjoy some thoughts I have. Hopefully I have some good ones. Uh, and we'll get into it. This is Money Game Part 3 by Ren. first words were mine, mine, gimme. Two years old he was walking, three years old walking quickly, four years old he was running round the pavements of his city, five years old and his daddy told him, listen here son, you gotta learn to be a man, a man he works for what he wants. Six years old and he's reading writing, top of the bunch, and when he's seven his progression made him student number one. Eight years old and he's praised for unusual grades. Nine, his parents paid for private school to nurture the flame. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, he ascends and ascends. His daddy tells him, son, money is the means to all ends. Fourteen, solving complex mathematical equations. At fifteen, IQ 150, still elevating. Sixteen, he develops complex software code that detects weaknesses in cybersecurity protocols. Seventeen, and he sells his vision. Keeping the share, not yet an adult, but he's practically a millionaire. 
18 and his daddy tells him now you're a man This world don't give a damn about you so take all that you can 19 he turns a profit, stocks and shares invest in product 20 double down deposit, 21 his income rockets 22 he learns the truth is just an obstacle to wealth If you manipulate the data then the lie will sell itself 23 a life of luxury, crystal and cocaine 24 he makes the Forbes list, they're applauding his name 25 and his daddy tells him listen here son while you're sitting in that palace, that don't mean that you won 26, a business shift, he switches business to arms He's 27, dealing nuclear and shells in Iran 28, inside the Senate, money bought him a seat He's 29, a role of counsel in the president's suite Now he's 30, his daddy says you're losing the race You're just a servant to the king, not even in second place 31, a big manoeuvre for his daddy's approval Moving imports over borders from the exports out of Cuba 32 Moving grams, growing kilos to tons He's 33, filling warehouses with powder and guns 34, turf war with nobody to stop it Blind eye from the popo inside of his pocket Thirty-five. He gets the call. I'm sorry, son, but it's your father. Had a heart attack. I'm sorry, he's gone. Thirty-six. Getting pissed off, abusing his product. Thirty-seven. Eyes glazed. Disposition demonic. Thirty-eight. With a prostitute, a moment of passion. Heating up a silver spoon and then chasing the dragon. Thirty-nine. Getting breathless and hungry for power. Daddy's words are still driving him to kill and devour. Makes a move against the cartel, but the strategy's flawed. They retaliate and leave him in a hospital ward A bullet buried in his vertebra And one in his leg The doctor sighs and says I don't think you'll be walking again Fuck Let me tell you a story about a boy named Jimmy. He was 40 and he cursed the words, mine, mine, gimme. 41, he wasn't walking. 42, not walking quickly. 43, never running round the pavements of his city. 44, inside a palace with a mountain of gold. But those riches turn to rubble when perspective evolves. Weighing heavy on his conscience is the value of gold. Lamborghini for a life, trading money for souls. Jimmy followed the code inside the land of the free Put your hand inside the cookie jar, take more than you need And his example is exaggerated versions of me And it's a version of him And it's a version of she And it's a version of you There's no escaping the blame The way we live is parasitic Fuck the money and fame Call the music This isn't entertainment, this is real life. The way we live is lunacy, community, it declines. Hyperpolarized, always fighting, then we divide. Truth is less important than the money that we design. Money's an invention, politics from our invention. They all come from people's ideas, did I mention? Borders an invention, law and order fuel the tension. It leads to people killing each other? My solution? Everything is subject to change. We could build utopias if individuals were taught to use their brains. But if we teach kids in schools to always be sheep and put themselves before the herd if there's more money for me, then there's no future I see where the humans survive with parasites inside the pet. 
petri dish with cannibal minds. Mold will grow upon the surface and consumes till it dies. And our fate could be the same without this story to the wise. Forty-five. Jimmy comes home out of the rain, soaking wet upon a wheelchair, drinking again. He is everything he wants, he is fortune and fame. He's a fortunate fool with an unfortunate fate. With a 45 caliber aimed at his brain. 45 a fitting number, cause his age is the same. Here's the words of his father. It's such a damn shame. Then he presses on the trigger of a money game. All right. So, obviously, it's a long one. It is, I mean, it's a song. I would say it's more even of a loosely tone poem sort of piece as opposed to a straight song um right it's a story with with music truthfully kind of like what um what ancient and by ancient i mean you know first century greek and roman plays would have been like right we've got the orchestra behind them or shakespeare would have been similar you've got music going and you've got rhyming words without necessarily being a strict song right it's more for the purposes of telling the story um it's really cool it's it's a cool conceit um uh, i believe that this is another one take video which is also really cool um i think i think ren could have a, a fairly successful career in acting if he ends up going in that direction um because he's really able to commit to these to these roles. Uh, I, I at first I was thinking maybe that was a homage to Hitman, which would tie in with the money a little bit with the suit and the, the red tie and everything. But I think it's just a power suit. Um, a few things. You know, I'm a I'm a lefty myself. Um, I mean, just look at my hair and my piercings, right? And, and there are some things that he points out that are very true. Money is invented. Um, the only reason gold has any value is because we decided that it does. Right? It's shiny. It's hard to get. So you can ascribe value to it and not worry about it, inflation, basically. But it isn't worth any more intrinsically than any other metal. There are, there are uses for it. Um industrially right you my headphones have a gold plated um, tip but gold really is just a metal paper money is just a representation of a metal that we have decided has value money is useful it is because you know otherwise you'd have to carry around like furs or a couch or whatever you were training planning to trade for whatever goods you needed um, it's a good shorthand, but it is just an invention that we made to make exchanging things easier. Borders similarly are invented and have changed throughout history. Um, you know, some countries exist that didn't and some countries don't exist that did. Um, we're currently watching the genocide of Gazans and Palestinians play out, as well as... Uh, genocide -ish in god multiple other places congo is having there's a lot of shit happening right now um but specifically in palestine we are watching a country attempt to rewrite borders and destroy the population that was living there previously destroy their ability to live there right by destroying infrastructure buildings homes hospitals etc and then they just move in and take over and annex that land. And now their borders have changed. Um, it makes me, it makes me really mad. <laughs> I'm trying to be calm and 
uh, polite, but it makes me really mad to see the bodies that I see every day on social media, the people that are pulling out of the rubble, the kids that don't have families anymore. Um, and I say that to every occupation, every war, both sides. I'm not here to say one side is more right because the Palestinians are fighting for survival and Israel has the weight of the US military behind them. So Israel is wrong. What they're doing is wrong, morally wrong. Um, but war, right or wrong, causes tragedy on both sides. You have generations of children growing up without parents. You have parents growing up, growing old without their children. And for what? I mean, in this case, it's a religious extremist war. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's not even motivated by religion. It's just motivated by power and money, right? Um, I would I would say this kind of goes in the same um, family of songs as Richard Corey, which is one of my favorite songs by Simon and Garfunkel, actually, which I am I am one hundred percent sure Ren knows that song, whether or not he was referencing it or uh, pulling from it in any way. I know he knows that song, and it is another tale of. A rich man who gets everything he wants and is the toast of the town and he's not happy and that man could be a woman it could be a politician it could be a political party it could be a country it could be an ethnic group it could be a religious group right it's just this this greed for more um i'm not particularly religious uh, i used to be but there's a verse in the Bible that people often misquote. It says, uh, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Now, most people just quote that as being the love of money is, is um, or money, rather, is the root of all kinds of evil. And that's not true. I mean, the verse itself does not say money is the root of all kinds of evil because money is useful. But the love of money to the exclusion of other things, that's where problems begin. That's when you start lying and cheating and stealing and committing crimes. And and let me also, as a lefty, say I think that a lot of crime is made up. Um, I don't particularly care about property crime. I don't particularly care about um, theft from large corporations because I've worked at large corporations. I know that they bake in some of that stuff. Um, I don't know if you can hear the people above me, but it is constant. Um, but when you when you start to prioritize money over relationships, over your personal life, uh, that can lead you to making some compromises that would uh, that would shock the younger version of yourself. Uh, what you would do for money. What you do do for money. Um, and to be clear, I'm not talking about like stripping or anything like that. I think sex work is valid work, right? People are willing to pay for it. People are willing to sell it. Nobody's getting... As long as nobody's getting trafficked, I don't care. Um, Besides, it's it's a lot worse when you're looking at boardrooms and the sorts of decisions people are making to uh, keep pushing opioids, for example. You know, I would I would trade uh, I would trade an awful lot of things to see the Sacklers pay appropriately for what they did to people. Um, it will never happen because they have too much money and they're insulated from it, but. I'm, I'm beginning to ramble. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so you'll, I, you know, I beg your uh, forgiveness on that, but people should be your priority. And, and making a positive difference in the world should be your priority. 
um, making a positive difference in the lives of the people around you, right? Not not doing something big necessarily, um, but just helping somebody out with something they're having trouble with. Um, I just stopped and helped the lady air up her tire. She had the air thing. She could have done it herself, but she didn't really know how to work it. So I helped her out. It took me five minutes. It was easy. She was really grateful. I may never see her again. And that's fine. All right. I don't need any reward from that. I just saw that she needed help and I helped her. And then it made me feel good. It's not complicated. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, free Palestine and uh, free Iran. Right. I know, although the, uh, the large scale protest movement was largely. Um, unsuccessful, I guess, in getting changes across. Uh, it was inspirational to see, and I hope that there is a prolonged period of pressure on the Iranian government to um, make some changes. And yeah, uh, power to the people, right? That's uh, that's my motivation. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe if you want to.